Cornerstone Retirement Partners presents Your Course to Retirement with Grand Rapids Certified Financial Planner Ron Corser and Nolan Gosley. Cornerstone Retirement Partners are planning today for the potential of tomorrow. And welcome into the program. This is Your Course to Retirement with Grand Rapids Resource for a common sense approach to planning for our financial, our investment, and our retirement future. He is president and founder of Cornerstone Retirement Partners, Ron Corser, CFP, providing us with the guidance and perspective on the financial world and helping to uncomplicate things, ladies and gentlemen. Ron, never any lack of issues to discuss, but today on the program, maybe one of the biggest universal questions in retirement planning is how much is enough and how much do I need to retire? We're going to try to tackle that big question from a number of different angles. Yeah, it really is the most important question. I want to welcome everybody to today's program. Those of you who are on your way to church, uh, you can hear everything just going to our website, uh, www.cornerstone-rp.com. That's www.cornerstone-rp.com. And you can access today's program and also all the other programs that we've done uh, over the past year or so, period. Also, if you have questions or you just want to talk, give us a call at 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Let us know how we can help and get you answers that you need. If you'd like to come in and talk based on perhaps listening to other programs we have or perhaps something's changed in your financial life, give us a call at 616-301-2581. We can be of help to you and be a resource for you. So, yeah, the key question for everybody always is, do I have enough? <clears throat> do I have enough? And, and that's one of those questions that uh, philosophers have, have uh, wrestled with for the last five or 10,000 years, isn't it? You know, back in the old days, if you were a goat herder, you always wanted to know, was your herd big enough? Did you have enough goats? Did you have enough sheep? Did you have enough cow? Whatever they had. Was it going to be enough? And, and there's no one answer that fits everybody. And that's probably one of the most important things I can tell everybody today. There's no right one answer as to how much you should have or how much do you need. There's no one right answer. Why is that? Because everybody's different. Everybody's life experiences, values are different. Uh, how you live is different. There's a lot of things. That, you know, Do you have a lot of debt? Do you have, as I always joke here with, with Peter about his retirement plan. You know, we talk about he's got $10 million saved already. And I said, wow, that's pretty good. And then he asked me again, can he retire? And my question to him was, well, Peter, tell me how much money you need every year, income, whatever you want to call it, to maintain your lifestyle. And Peter's number is a modest $1 million a year. So he's got $10 million, he's spending a million. And my news for him is, Peter, you don't have enough to retire. You don't have enough income in retirement to retire. And then he goes away mad and we never talk for another month. And then he comes and does my show again. So that's about where everybody is. I'm, I'm part of a, a, a network, if you will, other financial advisors. And, and we get online and, and discuss a lot of different things. And the number one topic always is, do I have enough in retirement to retire? How much is enough? And the only way I can really answer the question is this way. I don't know. I don't know the number because the number is a little different for everybody. But what we're going to talk about on today's program is how do you arrive at a sense of how much you need in retirement to retire and in terms of income from all sources? And where is that money going to come from? That I think we can tackle and give you a, a pretty good uh, ballpark view of, of what you need to consider <clears throat> before you retire. So stay tuned, everybody, because I think uh, this will be an interesting program, and I think we'll have fun with it, too. Again, if you've got questions, if you would like to address this important question and get your specific answer, how much do I need to retire? Am I already prepared and ready to retire? Do I still have some ways to go? How much is enough to retire comfortably? Or any question about your money, your investments, your retirement accounts, your portfolio, the risks that you're taking, the fees that you're paying, the taxes that you may be liable for, how to address 
and to uh, maximize income from social security and or pensions, how to minimize the risks of long-term care expenses being prohibitive to maintaining a quality of life. There are so many different topics that Ron Courser CFP can help you address and answer. All you need to do, Grand Rapids, is get in touch with that resource there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Ron, I think that you, in a way, sort of addressed this in assessing my situation with my $10 million lump sum, but my cash flow um, conundrum. Does a lump sum, does some magic number once we attain it, whether it be 1 million, 1.5, 2 million, 5 million, does that number of dollars in our account ever truly indicate if we are financially prepared for retirement? Well, I think the answer to that is no, not really. Um, you know, if you have $40 million in retirement and you're only spending uh, $3,000 a month to live on, you're probably going to be okay. Right. <clears throat> but for a lot of us, we have a certain lifestyle that we want to maintain. And whatever that lifestyle is, it's your lifestyle. And nobody wants to go backwards in terms of their lifestyle uh, when they retire. So the key question is, is how do we manage this? How do we deal with all of this thing? And, you know, it's, it's even more important, this question, because we've talked about it before in programs. What's different this year than, say, when we were talking about this three years ago? <clears throat> well, we've gone through the COVID issue. Uh, who knows where that ultimately is going to end up? But the other issue, particularly this year, that's just reared its ugly head like an eight-headed dragon, is inflation and stock market volatility. You know, historically... Uh, our profession has made assumptions about the future uh, and that those assumptions that there would be a certain amount of risk involved in your portfolio, there'd be a certain rate of return that you might count on or plan for, that inflation would be, well, you know, maybe two or three percent and things like that. But when we sit back now and look at what's going on around us, inflation is rampant. It, it's spooky rampant. And the other part is the volatility in the stock market. And, and neither of those two things seem to want to uh, calm down and go back to what we may think is, is normal. So the, 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 the individuals thinking about retiring this year are faced with a, really a new set of dynamics, not different, but a new set uh, with inflation and market volatility. And, and this impacts how we go about planning. Uh, right now, I, I tell everybody that we meet for the first time, and even clients when we do our numerous reviews, that the things that we planned on three, four, five years ago, we have to make an adjustment now. Because I don't know how long this volatility in the market is going to last, nor do I know how long this inflationary issue is going to be around. I don't think it's going to get fixed by tomorrow or next week or next month. So it's something we have to deal with. So part of the planning process is to just take a look at reality. Take a look around and say, this is the world we live in right now. I hope it gets better. I think ultimately it will, I just don't know when. But I think that right now to say to people, well, let's plan on inflation being two or 3% over your lifetime and in markets returning seven over your lifetime. That may happen, I'm not saying it can't, but that is, that's really a scary approach to planning. So what I'd like to do today with everybody, with your permission, Peter, is, is to go through some thoughts, some ideas, things to consider when it comes to that. I think I'm going to retire this year or next year, or maybe even the year after, or I just retired last year. Should I make any changes or readjust my thinking? And we're going to go through these things. And I think it's important. So if we've already touched the hot button with you and you, you want to give us a call for a little more guidance, give us a call at 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. That's www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there. We'll reach out to you. 
and gets you the answers you need so that you can really make solid, sound, informed decisions on your financial future. Again, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, the number to reach Cornerstone Retirement Partners and Ron Corser CFP, as well as the rest of the team there that look after your health and wealth care. And if you've got questions or concerns or would like that complimentary review, they are your resource. Pick up the phone, give them a call, 616-301-2581. Ron, you hit on a, a couple factors there where assumptions, are generally the basis of our financial plan, the assumption for a market rate of return, the assumption for what inflation is going to be. And we've talked about it often on this program. There's a saying that's pretty famous about assumptions, but your outcome in planning is only as good as the assumptions that that plan is based on. And a lot of people have pretty rosy assumptions when it comes to the financial outlook and forecast. They're not as rosy as they used to be. <laughs> this past six or seven months has, has started to change uh, some people's perception of the future. You know, as human beings, we tend to think linearly. We think in a straight line. So in 2019, when the markets were going up, the assumption was, well, they're always going to go up. And then 2020 hit and everything closed down. Oh, my goodness, the world's going to come to an end. I mean, I truly didn't know, nor did Nolan here at the office, what this shutdown meant. Uh, the government absolutely just put the pedal to the metal, printed more dollars we could shake a stick at, and things started to bounce back. But we still have enormous problems from that shutdown and the whole COVID issue. We see it in supply chain issues. Uh, I gave you a great example. Over the weekend, I tried to go buy a new Mr. Coffee. And I'm one of those guys, I don't buy the fancy one with all the bells and whistles on it. I just want to know, when I push the button, does the coffee cook? So I always buy the cheapest Mr. Coffee, and they last a long time. So I went to the store, and they didn't have any Mr. Coffee machines. They had a bunch of other ones that I was not familiar with. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go to a different store and find one. Uh, and I ultimately did. But we have some supply chain issues, and it hit me. I thought, you know, I know we, we have problems with baby formula and women's products and, and a whole bunch of other things. But for some reason, it never occurred to me that Mr. Coffee would be hard to find. But it is. So I, I had to make an adjustment. You know, I had to make a decision. Do I really want Mr. Coffee or will I accept the substitute? My position was I'm not going to accept the substitute. This is the brand I know and trust. A lot of that is, is, is the same kind of thinking that we have to use when it comes to our retirement planning. What do I mean by that? Thinking about our retirement and our financial future, are we going to, to ignore the facts around us and say, I know inflation is 8 and 9% right now and we have problems, but I think by next month it's going to get fixed. So I will plan on 2 or 3% inflation right now and having everything I need, I can go get any time I want. And the cost of food will be like it used to be two years ago. So most people, if you pose that, I said that to them, they say, Ron, you're out of your mind. <clears throat> Things are not what they used to be. And then my response would be, well, let's don't plan like we used to try to plan. Let's use the reality in front of us. Why is that so important? If we plan on continued high inflation, I'm not saying whether we should plan on 8, 18, 5, whatever, but higher inflation. And also we plan on higher expenses, uh, cost of food, cost of gas, taxes going up. Taxes are always going to be a cost in retirement. If, if we approach these items and saying, look, the way they are now is the way they're going to be. Let's plan on it that way. Because if down the road, things change and get better, if inflation does start to go down, if the cost of basic necessities, food, shelter, gas goes down, and we have planned on spending more on those items, then our plan becomes even more solid, doesn't it? We, we, we're, we planned on spending a lot more on food and taxes and gas, and yet it hasn't materialized. So we got some money left over to do other things with. 
So it's always better, I think, when we plan to plan on not the worst case scenario, but to plan on where we are right now. And, and what that brings us to is an idea of something we've talked about a lot, but it's so important to understand. It's called the income gap. What in the world is the income gap? Well, let's put it this way. Let's say you need $5,000 a month to live on to maintain your lifestyle. It's a modest lifestyle, right? And you take a look at all the predictable permanent kinds of income you have coming in. And Social Security is one part, and maybe you have a pension is another part. But all of a sudden, the guaranteed or permanent income that you have is, say, $3,500. So you need $5,000. You only have guaranteed or predictable permanent income of $3,500. That difference, the $1,500 difference, is called the income gap. That's the money that has to come out of your life savings. That's the income you need that your life savings has to generate for you so you can maintain your lifestyle. And also it has to go up every year. So the key question becomes, do you know what your income gap is? Now to figure that out, you need to know a couple other things. You really need to understand and know what, what your income requirements are, how much money you really need every month coming in after tax, not before, but after tax to maintain your lifestyle. And what I recommend sometimes when we meet for the first time when we start doing retirement planning for people is, is can you do this? And, and it's, it's, it's kind of like a budget. I hate to use that word, although budget has more letters in it. It's still a four letter word. <laughs> I said, let's just track every penny you spend for the next 90 days. Doesn't matter. You know, 10% on this, $2 for chocolate bar, whatever you're doing, track every dime, every penny and come back in 90 days. And let's see, how much money you really need coming in every month. And that would include rent payments, taxes, mortgage payments, car, whatever you're doing. That gives you a great sense of how much you really need. And once we have that number, then we can take a look at, well, where's your permanent income or guaranteed income coming? Maybe all you have is most people, just Social Security. So if you need that 6,000 or 5,000, and all you have is Social Security, and maybe it's three or two, whatever it is, you have an income gap problem. And that problem is solved by taking money out of your life savings. And there's the rub. When we think about your life savings, how do we, how do we allocate it? Where do we put it? What kind of accounts do we put it into so that it'll start to give us the kind of income that we need in retirement to maintain our lifestyle? Here is the number one key to success, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you driving, just listen. If you're on your way to church, those of you at home, if you have a pencil, write it down. The number one key to success in planning for your retirement is to fully understand your income gap and how you're going to fill that income gap. If you know both of those answers to those questions, you're well on your way to be successful in retirement. Know what your income gap is and know how you're going to fill that gap. That's where we come in to help people. We help them really put a hard number on the, the income they need in retirement. But what we're really helping them do is, is that almost scary thing, nebulous thing, of where are we going to get the money we need so that we can stay retired, so that we can enjoy retirement and not worry if the market goes down another 10 or 20%. We're still going to have everything we need coming in every month to hold on to our lifestyle, to maintain our lifestyle, to be able to do things with children, grandchildren, to enjoy retirement. That's where we can be a really great help. We're good at this income planning in retirement. It's one of the key things that we do at our firm. So if this makes some sense to you, you have an interest in knowing more or learning more, please give us a call, 616-301-2581, 616 616- 301-2581, or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. That's www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there. We'll reach out to you, give you the answers you need or help you in every which way we can. Ron, there, there are so many things that 
in our modern society, I would qual- qualify as lost arts, things that were once done with regularity that we don't do so much anymore. And I feel like budgeting may qualify into that category that it's just something that once upon a time was done frequently and over time, both because of technology and because many of us are living at a level where we are comfortable with our income being able to meet and exceed our spending, that we just don't pay as much attention anymore to that budget. And I know it's the four letter, six letter word in the financial world, but when it comes time to leave the paycheck behind and begin to live off of our savings and our nest egg, doesn't the importance of budgeting become kind of priority number one and paramount to our ongoing, lasting financial success and durability? Yeah, it really does. And one of the things I tell people, here's the good news about that four-letter word called a budget. In most families, there's one person responsible for all that. In my family, my wife, Nancy, who also works here with her team, helping people with Medicare and long-term care and things like that. She does all of the bookkeeping for our family. And I'm so eternally grateful to her for that. But she's got spreadsheets upon spreadsheets. And I'm just in awe of that. I really am. So she knows every dime that comes in, every dime that goes out. There's a lot of of couples, a lot of individuals who do the very same thing. They may not have 14 spreadsheets but they have a really good sense and way to track expenditures. So the budget four-letter word sounds really bad because we've been trained a long time ago. Somewhere they said, well, you have to have a piece of paper and you have to list everything and you have to put it down and then you have to track it. It's like, oh, my goodness. I I don't know if I want to do this. But we do it almost naturally. Now, where people run into problems with this, four-letter word called budgeting, is if they get close to retirement and they don't truly understand how much debt is impacting their lifestyle. What do I mean by that? We always, all of us believe and know and say, boy, if I can just get into retirement with no debt, I'll be so much better off. And that's true. That really is true. There's a lot of people in this industry who will speak those words as gospel. If you can get into retirement without debt, you're so much better off. But sometimes that's not possible. It just isn't. So then the question becomes, well, how much debt do you have? And what kind of debt is it? Sometimes people have a mortgage and they just can't pay it all off while they're working. I get that. That's kind of somewhat normal. And it it can be managed in a retirement income plan. But sometimes some of the other debt gets away from us. Credit card debt, uh, particularly this year uh, with car leases. You know, we we tend as consumers to buy everything on a monthly payment. We bought our house on a monthly payment. We lease our cars on a monthly payment. And when interest rates have gone up, sometimes those lease payments and other payments have gone up also. And so it starts to get away from us a little bit. So one of the key areas where we can be of help when it comes to that four letter word called budgets is we can take a look and have a nice easy conversation about the debt that exists in somebody's plan and and what are some of the options for handling it? What are some of the things we can do? Sometimes it's as simple as that. Yeah, we'll just take money out of the 401k, pay the tax and get out from under that high price debt. Sometimes that can make sense. Sometimes it may not make sense if it's really a lot of debt, but we can help come come to conclusions about how should we manage this thing? Because it's important to manage it. I have seen people who have retired and they've been somewhat unsuccessful in managing their debt load. And, And I'll tell you, the farther it goes, the worse it becomes. So that's one of the things we can be of help to when it comes to this whole planning process. I never condemn anybody for having debt. I never do. Because not all debt is bad. It really isn't. Um, 
But there has to be a way to manage it in retirement because when you retire, think about this, you don't have a paycheck coming in every month or every week. You have to rely on your life savings to replace that paycheck. So that's a finite amount of money, how much it is, whatever it is. And, and you've got to be able to manage your debt, taxes, and everything else. But, so that's where we can be a great help. So one of the foundation parts of this is an expression in the building trades and in tailoring, you know, measure twice and cut once. Why do, why do people say that? Because you don't want to make a mistake if you're cutting a piece of timber. Now, I'm, I'm just going by what people tell me. I understand, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to working with my hands, if I can't fix or do something with a hammer and duct tape, I need to call a professional in really quickly. But even I have been known when hanging a picture to measure twice before I pound that nail into the wall. Why do we do that? Because we don't want to make a mistake. We don't want to leave a gap. It's the same kind of attitude and idea when it comes to income planning, is you want to make sure that there isn't a gap between what you need coming in every month and what actually is coming in every month. You want that gap to be as filled as quickly and as possible before you retire. <clears throat> Please don't say, well, when I get in retirement, I'll handle it, because it's not going to work that way. So in dealing with these issues, particularly the income gap, the income plan, critically important. We're good at this. We can help you. So if this is important to you, it'll be important to us. Give us a call at 616-301-2581 or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there and we'll reach out to you, get you the information you need and the help that you want. Again, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581 to reach Cornerstone Retirement Partners, Grand Rapids, your resource for planning assistance for your financial, your investment, your retirement future. All you need to do is get in touch with Ron Corser, CFP, and the team there from Cornerstone Retirement Partners, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation of how do I know when I'm ready to retire? How much do I need? When can I retire with confidence? Those are the, the big questions with big answers. We're talking about those on today's program with Ron Corser CFP. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with more of Your Course to Retirement in just a moment. And welcome back into the program. This is your course to retirement with Grand Rapids resource for information, perspective, and guidance for your planning, for your investments, for your retirement future. The team from Cornerstone Retirement Partners, Ron Corser, CFP here with us today, talking about the big question. How do I know when I am ready to retire? How much is enough to retire with confidence. And if you've got questions or concerns, or you'd like to answer that question for yourself, pick up the phone and give a call to Cornerstone Retirement Partners, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. But as we talked about in the first segment of the program, Ron, it isn't just an arbitrary number that works universally for everyone. You really have to sit down and figure out the answer yeah. for that question for your specific circumstances for your specific situation. That's kind of the rub of it all is that we can't just give a generic answer of how much is enough. And for a lot of people, their plan sort of relies on averages or projections and assumptions into the future. And I heard a great analogy. I know you're big on stories that illustrate points in the financial world. And I was wondering if I could share this analogy sure. with you that I, I, I recently heard. All right. So I'm a river guide. We're, we're out on an African safari and we've got this river that we need to cross, Ron. It's about a hundred yards across. And, and you know, we, we get to the edge of it and I say, hey, we, we've got this river crossing. There are dangerous animals in here. There are things that you need to be worried about, but I, I think we'll be okay. Um, we're all just going to trek along. And the average depth of this river is only two feet. So we should all be okay. 
Now, is, is that information about the average depth of the river going to be sufficient for you to feel warm and fuzzy and comfortable in, in crossing over that, that 100 yard stretch of river, Ron? Or are you going to be more concerned with how deep is the deepest part of the river? I'm going to be concerned about two things. If I decide to walk in that river, how deep is it in my first step? <laughs> and secondly, is there like a 42 foot alligator waiting? <laughs> for me is a buffet tidbit. But so no, many people I, whether it's 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 average two feet or twenty feet, all I'm concerned about is what is it and where I'm walking where I put my feet. First step, second step, third step. That's all I want to know. I mean, you can talk to me about averages. I'll tell you a little story too, uh, when you're finished about averages. Go ahead. Well, yeah. So, I mean, just so many people base their plans on averages, on on these hypothetical numbers that we almost rely on having to happen consistently in order for our plan to work when in actuality, we're not so concerned with the average. We're worried about the deepest part or the most dangerous part. And that's the part in the planning that we really need to focus a little bit more on to know if we are ready to retire with confidence. Yeah, it's very true. You reminded me of a story. Can I tell you my story? <clears throat> many, many years ago, when I was young and thin, I was in the military. And um, it was over in Southeast Asia. And the rainy season had kind of started. It wasn't full blast. We were walking through, and there's this, what looks like a puddle. It's about maybe 20 feet wide, 30 feet wide. I don't know. But interestingly, you can never tell how deep a puddle is by looking at it. So I thought, okay, I'll just keep walking. I took about two steps and I went in up to my neck. It was a B-52 bomb crater that had gotten filled up with water. Now another two steps and I'd have been in the mud over my head. I don't know what would have happened. But some of my guys had to grab me by my shirt collar to hold me up. <laughs> And after that, I never walked in another puddle again if I could avoid it. I always walk around it. Because you can never tell how deep a puddle is or a pond until you uh, figure it out. It's, it's like the river. Uh, <clears throat> so you just kind of calm, got up a memory there for me. Thank you for yeah. indulging well, me for a brief un moment. Un unfortunately, I think that too many plans are based on those averages or the thought that, hey, this is just a surface level puddle. It's no more than a couple inches. And then we find that spot, Ron, where we fall in down to our neck or, or above our head. And all of a sudden we realize how much trouble that assumption actually is. And that's I think why we need to talk about this question of how do we figure out if we're ready to retire, where are some of those potholes and puddles and deep spots that we need to concern ourselves with. And we talked in the first segment about how a lump sum is never going to indicate if we're ready to retire. But there's another number that I think people use even more commonly than the dollar amount, and that is their age. Age also, though, Ron, is not going to tell us if we're truly prepared to retire or not. No, it isn't. It, in fact, it's, uh, it's almost irrelevant from my point of view. Why do I say that? Well, you could be 45 years old and have $20 million in the bank, and you're only living on $3,000 a month. You can retire right now. You're going to be all right. As long as you don't do something stupid, you're going to be okay. Or you can be 78 years old and say, I think it's time to retire. In fact, I had a lady who worked to be 79. And her idea of retiring is that she said, I'll retire when I can't do this work anymore. It had nothing to do with her money. She had for her, for her lifestyle, she had plenty of money. So age is, age is kind of irrelevant. You know, I, I've been in this business for going on 27 years. One of the things I, I try to help uh, people I talk with understand, is when you think about retirement, it doesn't matter how old you are. You have to think in terms, I think, of 20 to 25 to 30 years in that thing called retirement. Now, to go back to the one lady who was 78, obviously, we didn't use the 30-year retirement like horizon for her because uh, that would be out of the ordinary. <clears throat> 
But let's say somebody's 62. I've run into uh, more than my fair share of folks who have had to retire before Medicare age because of health reasons. So they're 62 years old or 61. We help people get the health care coverage that they need. Uh, but with whatever's going on with, with their health, it probably is going to shorten their ultimate span of living. Potentially it can. So sometimes you can say, well, let's plan for 30 years. But what we really try to do is say, let's really work hard to get you past the next 15 or 20 years. Let's make sure that you and your wife are going to be okay then. And then part of the planning process is also, <clears throat> and this is never a comfortable thing to talk about, but as a fiduciary, I, I really find I need to talk about it. Let's talk about the what ifs. <clears throat> Let's talk about what if, if your spouse doesn't live as long as we had hoped for any number of reasons. Have we done the right kind of planning so that the surviving spouse, particularly if it's the wife, is going to be okay? Will she be okay? Most people want to make sure, it's like me and you and a lot of other guys, um, I got, I got a really good buddy, and he's, he's, he's a client, too. And he says, well, if something happens to his wife, he'll be fine, because even if he loses all his money, he can go out and eat leaves, tree bark, and live out in the woods. And we kind of laugh about that every time we get together. Through Guy's perspective. Yeah. But in my own brain, I'm more concerned about my wife, Nancy. You know, I, I assume that uh, God's going to let me live to be 100. I ask for that. Um, people say, why would you want that? And I say, well, the other part I ask for is that I know I'm 100. Because why would you want to be 100 if you don't know it? So those two things have to go together. But my ultimate concern is that if God calls me home earlier, is, is my wife going to be okay? Most people think that way. Not all, but most. So part of the planning process has to deal with the what ifs in life. What if one of you don't last as long, live as long as you think? Will the other one be okay? Because you don't live on half the income. Bills don't get cut in half. So that's another part of the planning process that doesn't have a lot to do with age. You just have to plan for it. You have to make sure that in, in a great scheme of things, you've covered all the what ifs. What if I live longer than I think? What if I don't live as long as I think? Is my wife, my spouse going to be okay? My significant other? What if I decide to get a second job? What if I decide I don't want to ever work or do anything ever more? What if I get sick? All of those things come into a really good planning process kind of approach. And a good plan should at least touch on all of those. So that whenever we end up doing reviews, we can say, does all of this still make sense? Is it still working? So, you know, we go back and we say age and a lump sum, they're important, but they're not key. Everybody has to look at this in their own light of what they want to accomplish, what kind of lifestyle they have, how's their health, what do they intend to do uh, with the money that they've saved, all of those things. And then you include things like taxes, cost of living, health care costs, which are going to be dramatic. And, and you put it all together in a plan that makes sense, that will survive if inflation goes to 15% or if inflation goes back down to three. It, in all events, it, it will work. And it has enough flexibility built in so we can make adjustments. So this is all part of the planning process. It's all part of why I encourage all of you listening to today's program to come and talk with us, because that's the kind of talk we have when we first meet. We talk about what's important to you. What are your major concerns? What do you think are the biggest challenges that you're going to face going forward? How do you feel about those things? What are your thoughts? What's important to you? Tell me about all of that. And we'll share thoughts and ideas as to how we can begin the process of helping you. It's not something that is done just in a one hour meeting. It takes time. It takes a lot of time sometimes, but it's time we're willing to spend. So if this is important to you, ladies and gentlemen, it will be important to us. Give us a call at 616-301-2581.
616-301-2581 or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there and we'll reach out to your doctor because we do want to help. And I really believe we can help you have a great retirement plan put put in place. Ron, in the first part of the program, we talked about budgeting and understanding the budget and having the cash flow to cover the budget obviously is part of this formula, but you just mentioned a myriad of other factors as well. How important is it to have extra over and above what it takes to cover our expenses, to cover that budgetary need on day one of retirement? And how do we, how do we identify what is essential and, and, and going to cover those bare bones? And then what is kind of discretionary money and funds that we could feel confident taking some trips with or doing some of those extra things we, we always envisioned retirement to be about? Well, that's a great question. So let's explore it a little bit. There always is two parts to our retirement money plan. The first part is how are we going to pay all our bills? <clears throat> Get that out of the way, the basic income plan. Then the second part is we may want to do something other than just sit on the porch and watch the cars go by. So the key here is that the first say, what is the income? Let's go back to the income back. It's interesting, isn't it, how we always keep going back to some really basic ideas. So we go back to the income gap. We put that to bed. We fill that income gap with any number of ways and approaches. And then let's say you need $2,000 a month out of your, your, your income, out of your life savings after tax. We put that to bed and we say, okay, now I know for an absolute fact that you are going to spend more money in the first three to five years of retirement than you're spending now. I know that for a fact. I've been doing this for almost 27 years. Happens to everybody. So where are we going to put some of that other money? Some of our clients call it their fun money. Some of it could call it their retirement, family money, any name you want to put on it. But you're going to need extra income, extra resources, extra money to take those trips, to do the things you want to do that just come up on a spur of the moment sometimes. <laughs> Great stories I tell is I had a client, this is many years ago. They retired in 1998 at the height of the boom at dot com. And he and his wife retired early. Um, they were both 58. He had had a mild heart attack. So get out. They retired with about $700,000, which is pretty good. I mean, they worked hard for that. So they were campers. So he had a camper. And after they retired, they went camping. He came back and he called me and said, Ron, I need, I need some more money. And I said, okay, how much you need? And he told me. And I said, I'm curious what you're going to do. He says, you know, we went camping and in the campground, I, we had to camp next to somebody. They had a really nice trailer that was bigger than ours. And I want to get one like that. I want a bigger trailer. So we sent them the money so they could buy a bigger trailer. Um, about seven, eight months later, he called me back and he said, Ron, I need some more money. I said, okay, how much? He told me. And I said, what's going on? He said, I saw another camper. It's bigger and it's really cool, man. We can, it's almost like a house and I want it. So in the span of about 14 months, he bought two additional trailers. Of course, he had to buy a bigger truck to haul them. Those are the kind of things that, you know, we never, ever talked about. The good news is that he had enough money to do that. The even better news is it taught me that as a resource in planning, I need to help people understand that they're going to spend more, whether they like it or not. And our job is to make sure they have the best opportunity and the best potential to succeed in whatever they're trying to do in retirement. If you have questions, concerns, would like to get that plan put together, pick up the phone and give a call 616-301-2581, 616 I guess at the end of it all, Ron, you've talked often about the things that money can do for us. It can grow, it can be safe, it can be liquid, it can provide an income, but that money is generally a terrible multitasker. One thing I've never heard you say is that money at a certain point gives us a sense of enough. 
And it just seems like it, it never does, right? There's never enough money for us to have a sense of true confidence that we've got enough of it. And no matter how much we have, there's always some desire to have more so that it's enough and more so that it's enough. And we never, we never seem to hit that point, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, that that's that's part of the human condition, isn't it? You know, I uh, sometimes I've seen this on Facebook on occasion. It's something you fed to the extent that, you know, if you're grateful for what you have, life becomes a joy to live no matter what's going on. And that really is true. The difference between wants and needs, we all go through it. I do, you do. I mean, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not immune from all of these things. Uh, some of the things that I want are not, maybe not in the ordinary things. I don't want a faster car. Uh, given my body parts, I don't think I could get into a Corvette. And if I did, I'm quite sure I couldn't get out. At least four people are pulling me out of that thing to help me. So there's certain things, you know, that uh, I just don't want or need. But every once in a while, I think, you know, it'd be really great to give my kids a bunch of money and buy them a new house. Just walk over, give them a big check and say, listen, you go get that house that you've always dreamed of and I'll pay for it. You know, that's something that's in the back of my head that I'd like to do. I know I'm going to do things, for example, like, okay, your grandchildren want to go to college, I'll help you. Not because I think college is such a great deal. I'd much rather my grandson learn how to become a plumber or electrician or something. It's my granddaughter too, but chances are they'll end up going to college. So we'll help them. Uh, I would love to be able to give a bunch of money away to our church. We, we do tithe a lot, but there's so much, so many needs out there. And you just think, man, what should I do, Lord, with all my money, or with what little money I have? So you run into those kinds of things. And, and most people that I've met in retirement, particularly after the first year or two, become a little more conservative in what they do. I've only had one or two instances where I, I literally have to have a conversation with the client saying, You're, the, the plan we made is obsolete. You're spending way more than you said you would, that you thought you would, that we planned on you would. And, and you got two choices. You're going to run out of money or curtail your lifestyle dramatically in the very near future. If, you know, or you can continue doing and doing what you're doing. It's not going to end well. What would you like me to do to help you? I haven't had many of those because most people realize uh, that this thing called retirement is, is really a, um, it's really a blessed time. You know, it's a time to be grateful, a time to look back, a time to say, okay, I have my basic needs met. Now what? What can I do? Can I enjoy more time with the family? I get a kick when, when clients send me pictures of them on a family Disney cruise or, or they took the whole family to Yosemite or they do things like that. I absolutely love seeing that. I really do because they're building memories, you know, and memories are what we leave to our family. Yeah. When we die, pass away, yeah, we leave either a nice estate plan or a mess. They'll remember that. But while we're alive, did we, did we manage to build some memories? Did we manage to build some things, put some of our values into our grandchildren, especially in this time that's so weird out there? Did we manage to do that? So the difference between wants and needs is pretty real. Uh, but I think most people, at least the clients that we have, maybe it's the kind of people we attract that are fundamentally maybe a little more conservative. I'm not sure. But they become pretty good stewards of their money, of their plan. We built the plan that way to make sure that they can be good stewards if that's what they want. To call at 616-301-2581 or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there and we'll get out get back to you. One of the things I, I think we've been talking about today is really those little hard to grab things, you know, values, thought process. How do we do this? How do we go through this? How do we manage to build certainty in our plan in very, very uncertain times? Because that's where we're living now. And I have no idea what's going to happen this afternoon, let alone what's going to happen next year. 
So we can help put some certainty into that plan. We can help bring some peace of mind and give you the very best opportunity to succeed in retirement. So give us a call at 616-301-2581 or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there. We'll reach out to you and we'll help you. We spoke in the first part of the program, Ron, about the budget and about how eliminating debts would be helpful for the budget. But in today's modern society where we can purchase and possess and have things before we actually have the ability to pay for them and then put things on payments, that separation of wants and needs has become an increasingly blurred line. I think that uh, we, we easily convince ourselves that a want is a need somehow. And because we've got the ability to get it now, that it's justifiable to do so. Yeah, that's a tough one. And I, I tell people sometimes, I'll just smile and say, I'll, I'll keep in my prayers so we can work through this as to whether it's a want or a need. Uh, it's really difficult. And, it, and it's different for everybody, isn't it? You, you, I know you want a lifestyle. You need another $30, $40 million before you can retire. I'm not sure I need that much. Um, you know, it'd be nice. But, but I think the difference between wants and needs, you know, at some point in time, I think as people, we get to a point in time where for most of us, we're very content and satisfied with what we have. Here's one thing that I've heard from more than one client. And it goes like this. Boy, if I had to do it all over again, 10 years ago, I would have never built that McMansion. Because now they're saddled with this real estate that they have to pay a lot for, that they're still paying on. And they got way more bathrooms and bedrooms than they need just with the husband and wife being in there. I've heard that a couple different times. And my heart goes out to the people who are in that position. Um, so a lot of times, I think trying to figure out what we want to do over the next 10 years, if, if it's I need that retirement home and you can afford it and do it, bless you, go do it. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think we always have to ask ourselves 10 years from now, well, I have been reasonably happy with that decision. And that's something only individuals can make. And believe it or not, those are the kind of questions that go into making a really great retirement income plan. Is to have somebody like me look you in the eye and say, Peter, I know you're, you've told me you want to buy this. And I'll say, do you think 10 years from now you'll still be happy with that? If you can still say yes to it, then it's a pretty good thing to do. If there's hesitation, you can still do it. But it's a question that I think I have to ask as a financial planner, as a certified financial planner, as a fiduciary. It's our job to uncover everything as much as we can uncover. Turn over every rock, you know, all of that stuff to make sure we haven't left anything that can kind of jump up a year or two from now and bite us. So that's what we do in the whole planning process. The wants and needs issue, we can help ask questions that'll walk you through those things. But ultimately, we're all responsible <clears throat> for the decisions we make. But as our, if we can help you make better decisions, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> wouldn't that be great if we can help you make better decisions with better facts that have a better long-term outcome? So if this is important to you, give us a call, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, or go to our website, www cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Ron, as we wrap up this program here, I know that we talked a lot about filling that income gap and about the need for income and budgeting and figuring it out and sort of reversing into the answer of how much is needed for retirement. If we do find that we've got an income gap and, and we've got to generate some of those withdrawals and some of that income from our portfolio, um, there, there is a spectrum of different possibilities for tools that can be utilized to do so. Certain tools can offer 
guarantees while other tools offer opportunities and possibilities. Where do you think that the the opportunity for growth versus the certainty of guarantees and filling that income gap are balanced in what is the right equation? Depends on the individual, Peter, and that's not a wishy-washy response. One of the questions that I always ask folks that we're helping through this whole retirement planning process is, how important it is for you to fill that income gap after we've had a long discussion about it so that every month it's going to happen no matter what? How important is that to you? And if it's very important, then that's the first thing we do. But we don't take all the money and put it into things uh, that will give us the income but no growth. Because if you're going to plan on being alive for 25 or 30 years, you do need a growth engine in your portfolio. That's just a fact of life. So it's a balance. So the first question is to say how important it is to close the whole gap. Second question is how important it is to have growth in there and how much growth. So these are the key questions. We've talked a lot about it today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found this program to be informative. If you want to hear the whole program, go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. Uh, this month's, this week's program will be on there shortly. Previous week's programs are already on there. You can listen all of it. Uh, if, if what you heard today is important to you, give us a call at 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. We can help you. You can come in and we can talk. And that's all we'll do is talk. I don't provide solutions on the first call, so you don't have to be concerned about that. It's a, it's a pretty, uh, it's pretty easy and a pretty safe place to be. So give us a call at 616-301-2581. We can help you with this whole thing about retirement, income, future, the whole nine yards. One of the most common questions, how much do I need? How much is enough? Ron Corser, CFP there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners to help you arrive at your conclusion and your answer to that question, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a call, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Ron, always appreciate the time and perspective here on your course to retirement. Well, this has been fun. Ladies and gentlemen, we're entering the month of August. That means we still have a lot of time to go picking and swimming. But in another four and a half weeks, football season starts. And that is critical to my well-being. So I hope you guys have a great week. Take care. Bless you. And I'll talk to you next week. Tune into Cornerstone Retirement Partners' full radio program, Your Course to Retirement, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock at News Radio WOOD or visit cornerstone rp.com for many valuable resources, including those mentioned on this show and other great episodes of Your Course to Retirement. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group is solely an indication that the financial advisor has attended training provided by Ed Slot and Company, passed by annual examinations on material covered at conferences and in webinars, and met other membership requirements and does not constitute an endorsement of any kind. Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group members pay a fee for the educational programs that allow them to be included in the Ed Slot's Elite IRA. IRA Advisor Group. Membership does not guarantee investment success. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management, while insurance products pay a commission, which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not refer in any way to securities or investment advisory products. Annuity guarantees are based solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the products featured.